<laughs> so, so Tim, this, this whole month we're concentrating on the numbers, <clears throat> excuse me, the numbers we were doing fix and flip, uh, uh, previously and, and we're going to be doing self storage on the next show. Uh, but we really want to, uh, kind of get an idea when you're looking at your multifamily properties and we can start off with, uh, uh, your, your value add. And that's what you do mostly, correct? Mm -hmm. it, it's your value add stuff. We just want to get an idea of some of the numbers you're looking for. And then you can throw in some, uh, depreciation type of considerations in there, uh, if you like, but kind of give us a, 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 an overview of what it is that you and your funds are looking for when you're uh, getting into the multifamily space. Yeah. Ed, I mean, good question. And, and I appreciate you guys having me back. It's always, uh, always fun, always good conversation with you guys. So, uh, yeah. So I, I think the most important thing, or I guess like, let's get it down to the basics, right? When you're valuing a single family home, single family home to another single family home, it's valued based on the comparable approach, right? I had an appraiser actually at my house. I'm refinancing my home here in Charleston. Um, right now. And, and he's looking at other homes in the neighborhood, comparatively speaking to this home, size, square footage, bedrooms, bathrooms, the, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and obviously location. And they're saying, hey, the house down the street's a five bed, five bath, and your house is a five bed, six bath. It's a little bit more square footage and you're on the water and they're not. And that one sold for you know, X number of dollars and yours would probably get you know, 10% more, right? It's the comparative approach. When you look at apartment buildings, it's valued very differently. Apartment buildings are valued com completely based on the income approach. So that means you take all the revenue that the building generates minus all the expenses in order to operate it. And it leaves you with a net operating income. And then the value of that building is a multiple of that net operating income. It's called a cap rate. So it's valued the same way that a business would be valued. If you're going to go buy a business, you want to know what kind of cash flow it kicks off. What's the net income of that business and what kind of return on your investment are you going to get if you go and buy that business for X price? Buildings are, apartment buildings are, are valued the exact same way. So when we're looking at an apartment building, uh, the two major factors that affect the net operating income is the income and the expenses. Mm -hmm. So when I look at an apartment building, I'm looking at not what are the expenses today or what are the rents today. When you flip a house, you're looking at, hey, uh, what can I sell it for? Not what is it worth today, right? So I'm, look, I'm doing the same thing. I'm looking at the stabilized rents mm -hmm. and the stabilized expenses, not the today's rents and the today's expenses. It could have terrible management in place. They could be running up maintenance because they haven't renovated the place in forever. They could have uh, um, because of the poor maintenance and poor management, there's probably a lot of tenant turnover. There's probably, you know, they're probably overspending. They're not shopping around for different vendors and exterminators and landscapers and all those kinds of things. They're probably not appealing the property taxes. Uh, they're probably not shopping their insurance around. They're probably not installing low flow water fixtures and led lights to reduce their utility expenses. They're not most mom and pop owners, um, are not doing those kinds of things. So when I go into an apartment building, I'll, I'll look at what could this thing rent for if it was fully renovated, it was in good shape. It might be getting $700 a month now, but if I could run comps in a mile radius, three mile radius or five mile radius and show that, you know, one bedroom can actually rent for $900 a month and a two bedroom should be renting for $1,200 a month. That allows me to then underwrite the numbers of kind of like with a single family house. If you underwrite a single family, and you say, hey, all the houses in this neighborhood are selling for $200,000. If, uh, you know, I want to be all in for 70% of that after repair value, right? And so I need to be all in for 140. It's going to cost me $30,000 of renovations, which means that my maximum allowable offer is $110,000. You guys follow me so far on the single family side? You yeah. understand that, right? Multifamily, I do the same thing. So I'll take whatever the stabilized rents are. And then I know what the stabilized expenses are going to be. A lot of them you can look up. You can have your insurance agent shop the insurance. Management's a fixed amount of whatever the gross collected rents are. You're going to have some salaries. and some, There's some other expenses and other line items, I would say, um, outside of what you have in the, in the residential world. But we take all those things and we have the, net, the stabilized net operating income. And then I divide by whatever that market cap rate is. So if it's a 
let me just uh, let me give you some numbers, right? I'll get my calculator out real quick. If you have an apartment building that generates a hundred thousand dollars of net operating income, and you're in an area that let's say property appraises at a six percent cap rate, pretty standard for right now. That means at a hundred thousand dollar NOI at a divided by 0 0.06, a six percent cap rate. The stabilized value of that is somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.6 to 1.7 million dollars. Okay, I don't want to pay retail. You guys are investors. You don't pay retail. Sure. I don't want to pay retail either. I want to buy it at a discount. So I know that if I want to be all in for let's say 70 cents on the dollar, I just multiply that by 0.7, which means my all-in price has to be 1.17 million dollars. You guys following me so far? Yep. Yep. Then I deduct so, out the construction cost the same way that you deduct out the construction cost in the resident or yeah, in the residential side. And let's say it's two hundred thousand dollars, which means most I can pay my maximum allowable offer is nine hundred sixty-six thousand dollars. So that's how I value the properties overall. And I'm sure we can get deeper into the woods or into the weeds, but high level, that's uh that's how we value apartments. Yeah.